Hey guys, in this episode we actually start doing our menu scene and as you can see on the screen this is what we get. So we got our tower from the preloader to the menu scene and then we've added a nice rotation of that camera. So we orbit around that tower depending of its height. So say the height is um, a little bit less. Oh, never mind. Just fix that real quickly. So the height is a little bit less. It's also going to calculate its offset and the camera is going to be a lot closer to this tower. So guys, without further ado, let's get started. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to this game tutorial. Last episode, what did we do exactly? So we've created some more fields inside of the tower. We added some more stats such as the crit chance, the region, also the lock for future currency. In this one, we're going to start tackling the menu. So we're going to actually do some visual stuff today. So that's actually more entertaining the last episode. So, all right, guys, um, I'm going to open up this little file here. I've got saved and my menu, pretty much this file has a good vision of what I'd like to put in my menu. And the first thing I'd like to do is the camera moves around the tower thing. So this, I believe, is going to make the menu looks really nice. And that is exactly what I'm going to do right away. But right now, what do we have? We have a preloader scene. This one, we don't really want to do any visual in there, right? Because this is going to be uh, so quick. You won't even see this because first, there is no camera. And second, uh, inside of that preloader scene, we're pretty much just telling, okay, so you've got everything set up. Let's go ahead and load up the menu now. And you know what? Let's actually do that right now. So in order to load the menu, we need a menu. We are going to hit Control N on the keyboard or File New Scene if you prefer. And inside of that one, I just go ahead and hit Save, so Control S, and save this as the menu. Now we've got a new scene in our project folder. Let's drag and drop it inside our scene folder just to keep everything clean. We're going to try and be as clean as possible during this project. And um, as always, Window, Lighting, Remove the skybox. I really don't like that default skybox. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so we got that skybox out of the way. We are going to actually link these two together, so the preloader and the menu scene. Now, inside of my preloader, all I have right now is the tower, and this one is only going to be instantiated once. So the the, the start of this the tower script is actually only going to be run once because we're not reopening that scene. So what I'd like to do is actually open up the tower script, so the big script we've made so far. And we are going to go at the very top of our script, once I'm done just collapsing these, at the very top of our script, and we're going to include, or I mean using, Unity Engine.scene management. You probably guessed it already, we are going to use the script to load the next scene. So we know that this is run only in the preloader. Therefore, we are allowed to do something um, at the start, at the end of our start. We're going to do scene manager dot load scene, and we're going to load the menu scene, just like this. Let's actually try it out. So, go back in your preloader. No, we're going to have an error, but if we hit play, it says the menu scene has not been added to the build settings, which is true. We need to do that now. So, let's go under file build settings and we're gonna double click on our preloader just to make sure this one is the first then do add open scene let's double click on our menu and add open scene as well they should now be both up here and we can then move on to more interesting stuff so let's open up the preloader press play we should now be in our menu scene with the tower here we go, so that's our menu scene. It has a camera, which is something our preloader does not have. And uh, that's the tower. Right, and now it's a little bit tall because I modified my reg edit, so let me just go back here and modify that back. It's under here, so my range is at level 80 right now, or I mean 50. So I'll put that back on one. Okay, so we've got our camera, we've got our tower. And um, just to give ourselves some visual feedback, I'll go back in the preloader, the tower, and I'll add a plane, so a 3D object plane, move it at 0, 0, 0, and I'll just put
put it as the children of the tower just temporarily so we have a good uh, visual feedback of our movement like this okay so like I said earlier the goal of this episode is going to have this camera rotate around the tower and actually look at the tower now there's multiple way to do this and I will use the one that we've already covered in a previous video let me just um, let me just boot up another script so what we're gonna do is now let's go back inside our menu scene and inside our menu scene we are going to have a menu manager like we usually do so let's go ahead and create a empty game object name it menu manager and the menu manager is going to take care of moving the camera as well so here it is this empty game object right there let's go ahead and just put it a icon why not uh, maybe red is a little bit too harsh let's go with green okay so this one needs a script let's right click on our script folder new C sharp and add menu manager script now menu manager has the menu manager script okay so far so good let's open it up inside of mono develop okay so what I'd like to do and I'll just pull Photoshop really quickly what I'd like to do is have my camera do some kind of circle around some kind of orbit so if we take a quick circle tool imagine that my camera is the yellow dot that's not really yellow is it is a yellow dot and I am trying to move around my tower so the tower would be another kind of dot so over here why not the pink dot is the tower and the camera is the yellow one now what I'd like to do is have my tower actually go like this so go all around my um, tower just like this now the way we do this is um, by orbiting around and orbiting around is going to pretty much take us some fields here so uh, I'm going to do a little bit less explaining and actually just do it because it's hard to explain <laughs> up here I'm going to put in comments this is my camera fields because menu manager is going to be used for more than simply just a camera so I'll just specify a little section for my camera fields first one being the transform of that camera of course so cam transform second one being the offset so vector 3 offset and another one called the transition which I'll explain in a moment and finally camera speed transition is going to be used uh, to determine at which angle you're at right now so we're gonna be using the 360 or actually no we're gonna be using the quaternion um, radiant and transition is going to tell us at which angle of that quaternion we're at right now so we're going to be incrementing this over time okay so we've got these right here let's actually set our cam transform in a start so private void start and then we can do cam transform is equal to camera dot main dot transform now in order, in order for this to work you have to make sure that your camera has the main camera tag on it up here which it does by default but if you changed it then um, if you created a new camera then you're gonna have to actually put that manually up there and then oops wrong tab and then we are going to do uh, nothing else actually let's actually create a function for our move camera so private void move camera and this is going to be moved in a update of course a private void update and inside of that update we do move camera okay so now we know that every single frame we are going to move that camera now this is taken from another video I've made in the past and the technique is quite easy let me just do it really quickly so transition is plus equal time the delta time times camera speed so this is the float that is going to be used as the uh, angle right and then all we have to do is say declare a new vector 3 so vector 3 uh, we could say desired position is equal to offset and then quaternion orientation is equal to quaternion dot Euler 0 transition oops 
transition, and then zero again. And finally, we do the transform.camera, so cam transform.position is equal to orientation times cam's position. Uh, I mean, desired position, which is our offset. So orientation times offset is going to actually do the orbiting for us. And finally, we also got to be moving the um, we also got to be moving the orientation of that camera. So we've got the position working. If we just press play right now, have a look at what's going on. Um, nothing. Okay. Oh, that's because my offset is not set right now. If I just do a quick one, so vector three times uh, forward times five. Why not? Just uh, temporarily, so we have a look. My orbiting works, so it's orbiting around the center right now because that's where my camera is going to be, not camera, but my tower is going to be. However, the orientation of that camera is never actually moving. It should be doing something like that. So every time we update the position, we should also be updating the orientation of that camera. Now again, Unity is really cool and it lets us, uh, let us do that with a single call on that transform. So if we do cam transform dot look at it's actually going to rotate the transform for us. But it takes in a uh, either a target, either a vector 3 world position, which is what I'm going to give it. I'm going to give him a vector 3 position and I'll do vector 3.up times cam transform dot position dot y. So the reason I did this is because I never want my camera to tilt up and down it's going to always look at the uh, the center, right? It's always going to look at the tower, but I don't want it to, say, go like this and then look down a little bit. I always want it to be straight like this on this angle, so on the uh, on the X angle. I always want this to be on zero. So that is why I've put its current position here. Okay. And is that good enough? Let's actually play it. Where is our camera? Here it is. Now, um, if we had the preloader up here, we load with the preloader, we press play. It actually takes the camera inside our menu scene. I mean, the tower in our menu scene. So this makes a little bit more sense now, but of course, our offset is wrong. And our offset is going to be wrong for quite a while. And I'll explain in a second why. It is because, um, what I like to do with this is say say your tower is uh, level one in range. So let's let's start with the base. So level one in range, I press start. The tower is quite tinny. It's not it's not really you know it's not tall. So I'd like the camera if it's t if it's like small like this, I'd like the camera to be closer to the actual tower. But then when it gets up to the max level, which is say 50, I uh, haven't decided on yet just yet. But if it's on 50 then, oops, wrong timing. Then I'd like the camera not to be as close as it was because else it'd be like this now and that doesn't really look good, right? So I'd like the tower to be about here. So we got to be calculating our own offset based on the actual uh, size of the tower. So I will go ahead and declare another function, private vector three calculate camera offset like so and now there's multiple things that uh, are going to affect this so the hit point level and also the um, range level which is pretty much the size of the tower in X and Z and the size of the tower in Y okay so let's start with a vector 3 new vector 3 R is equal to new vector 3 0 actually not the new one let's just do vector 3 zero and I like to use R as a par as a, I like to use R as a field name when I actually have to return something so I can simply type in return R right so um, what I like to do for the Y the offset in Y I'd like to be at half the width of my tower now I don't know the tower height right here do I know it instance tower stats Yep, we could actually get it like this. Int and then we do stat dot height uh, range. Sorry, 
So this way we could actually get the stat of the turret, right? So the uh, the range. But we don't know what's the base and we don't know how much we're gaining from that, like how much a level gets you because those are private constant inside of the tower script. So we don't have access to either this or this. So what I was thinking about doing is uh, we have like the initialize section here, we have the load section here, we're also going to have another section which is the getter and setter. So let's do a public float in this case, get tower height. Like so, it doesn't take in any parameter, but then over here we can simply say, okay, so you're going to return the base tower height plus tower stat add index stat dot uh, range times range height gain, like this. Now this way we can actually call this function from outside and get the exact height of the tower. Like so. Therefore, we're going to do r dot y is equal to this divided by 2. And it's going to give you half of the tower, which is exactly what we'd like in this case. And let's see, so this is going to work right. Now, uh, the next step we could be taking is actually calculating in x, n, and z. So how exactly we're going to do that? We're going to do the exact same thing as we did here. So copy this over get tower width dth and it's going to take in base tower width tower stat hit point and then we're going to do hit point with gain okay now based off this then I'm not quite sure what we're going to do exactly let's uh, let's figure it out together so get tower width and say our width is of 2, then it give us, it's actually good, we could actually leave it like that now I think about it. So maybe r.z is equal to r.x, which is the exact same thing, I just don't want to retype that whole state. And uh, what else can we do? I think that's good actually. Let's, let's actually try it out and then we can have a look at uh, what goes wrong. So we've got the calculate camera offset that needs to be called in the start, so right about here. And then we move using that very offset. Okay, let's press play on this, hopefully everything works first try. And this is what we get, so uh, didn't seem to work. Not quite sure why actually, let's have a look. So I don't, oh right here, the uh, private offset, let's actually remove that, that's the start, and then this is called calculate camera offset, but we don't ever do nothing with that, so let's just say offset is equal to calculate camera offset, because uh, this returns the value, it doesn't actually set it manually, we could change it, but I like it better that way, so, okay, right, so <laughs> here it is, this is what we get, so we did get the y-axis correct, this is at the half of the turret, but now as for the Z, there is definitely something wrong here. So let's have a look. So if we go to over here, R.Z. Oh, you know what? That's me. That's me uh, not putting the right thing in here. So there is no X. There is only a Y and a Z. Sorry about that. Okay, so for the Y we're fine, and for the Z, we're actually going to do what we set up here. So R.Z is equal to tower width. And maybe we even need to add this, so maybe R.Y plus the width of the turret. Okay, let's actually try this, I'm not sure if it's going to work. Definitely not. <laughs> oh, that's because I did it in the wrong order, my bad, so we calculate the Y and then we use it, like here. Once more, let's try this out, and it actually makes a little bit more sense, but of course uh, this is not perfect. It's missing quite a lot actually, so I think we're gonna have to need, we're gonna need another um, hard-coded values in there. Maybe like a 3, I'm not sure, 3.0f. 
okay so this looks good but we've added a um, a value that we're not sure it's going to work for every size so let's actually try it out I plan on having at least 50 level for the range now I'm not sure not maybe not at least but maximum 50 level and um, let's try with other values right so say our range level is level 1 this is what we get which is perfect I actually like that quite a lot uh, and I think that's because of the 3 offset now say we're going at around 10 so maybe 10 this is also very good okay halfway so 25 also works with me and let's do another one so maybe 45 yeah this is pretty good actually so the um, the additional value we add the plus 3 is going to do the job now of course if this does, if this doesn't work for you you can actually uh, increment or decrement that value or maybe add another custom formula of your liking but I get pretty much what I like here and I think that's going to be it because we covered quite a lot of thing and uh, we started doing the menu manager now of course we only touched the camera of that menu but we get a nice result already we actually got some visual rolling and um, maybe even had a slight movement to that why what do you think about that yeah let's actually try before we actually end the video let's actually just attempt creating a uh, a nice wave up and down on that Y value so at the move camera down here what I'll do is actually declare another float in here so float um, Y and I'll just call it I'll just do mathf.sin and we're gonna do we're gonna sin on time dot time like this and whenever we actually calculate that position so where is it at it's over here we do orientation plus desired position okay let's actually modify the offset a bit so offset plus vector 3 dot up and let's put that in parentheses so we actually don't mess up other stuff so vector 3 dot up times f and let's have a look And we get this kind of movement now. This might be a little bit too much. But you see what we've did. So we've orbit around this and we've also created a nice up and down motion. Now of course this sounds a little bit too much to me, so I'll just say uh mat matf.sin. Then this gives us a value in between minus one and one. So you can do say times zero point twenty five to reduce the intensity of that by um it's only now a quarter of that intensity so I like that quite a lot and I think I'll be leaving it there for now maybe a little bit later on want to retouch on these effects but right now this is pretty good for a third episode we've got some nice stuff rolling we also got some good uh, stats behind that turret of course we don't see it visually but you know it's going to be of use at one point alright guys so thanks a lot for watching if you enjoyed this or if you learned something please leave me a like really appreciate that uh, you guys have been amazing so far so keep keep on going and i will see you guys in the next episode